Let's look at abuse. How do we differentiate crime from abuse? Computer abuse talks about the use of the computer system to carry out tasks that are not illegal, but they are unethical. The tasks are not illegal, but they are unethical. So, which are these tasks? There are some activities that we do as individuals or as human beings which are not uh, unethical, which are not illegal, but they are unethical. Like when you send somebody so many email messages that the person is not interested in, that is unethical. If you just uh, carry out an activity like tying up a computer that is hosting a website so that every time I try to access it, I see socket error. That is not illegal. That is unethical. So let's look at the categories of computer uh, abuse. Uh, we have what we call jamming. Jamming as a category of computer abuse. Jamming. What does jamming deal in? In jamming, uh, you are tying up a computer that is hosting a particular uh, website so that legitimate users will not be able to access it. We are tying up that computer. We are blocking them from accessing it. They can access other data, but there is that important data. We just temporarily block them from accessing it. That means we are jamming up the computer system. We have the most common abuse uh, which people uh, really practice. It's called spamming. Uh, when you read your email messages, you'll find some messages that you don't need. Like you're told you have won some $400 million. And that must be somebody who really likes you. And, and you're supposed to send your account or you're supposed to uh, subscribe to another website so that you can be able to get the money. Or the message is just you have won this in a lottery. Now, th those are unsolicited, unsolicited messages. We have not requested for them. You have not subscribed to that site. Somebody, maybe through cookies, somebody was able to access your email address and they're sending you those messages. That is what we call spamming. This, so in, 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 in summary, spamming talks about the sending of unsolicited email messages to people who have not requested for them. And, and what, is, what, is the, what is the drawback of spamming? It wastes people's time. You will not even be able to see the very important messages that you're supposed to be able to get or the very important email messages that are in your email uh, mailbox. Your mailbox is flooded with a lot of messages. That is what we call computer abuse. Then let's move on and look at the techniques that we can use to prevent online fraud. A number of techniques can be used by organizations to prevent uh, what we call online fraud. Now, one of the techniques that we can use to prevent online fraud is data encryption. Data encryption. And, and I want to explain what encryption is all about. Now, when we talk about data encryption, encryption talks about the encoding of uh, messages that are being transmitted into a format that will not be understood by those uh, who are trying to hack the data along the transmission line. When a sender is sending data, we have sender. We can call this encryption. Uh, public key. That means we are encrypting using the public key. Uh, and the message goes to the receiver. Uh, that is encryption. And we have decryption, decrypt. And that is what we call the receiver. So decryption is use of private key. 
So let us do this illustration. The sender transmits the information. That could be the credit card information. And the credit card information is the credit card number, maybe BX46. Now this data is converted into a code that cannot be understood uh, by the hackers. That is now the encrypted data. And because we cannot, the receiver cannot understand this, hackers normally have a field day between this and this. That is where they try to access the data. Because the receiver cannot understand the data, the data will be decrypted. It will be changed back to its original format, BX46. It is decrypted using a private key. It is only the receiver who has the private key. The public key is common in the public domain. A good example of encryption is whereby I have ordered for products from a particular organization and I'm paying through credit cards. It's an e-commerce transaction. So what happens in this case is that the organization will expect me to make a payment. So while I'm on the e-commerce website, I click on the payment link. The moment I transmit this data, I type this data, that data will automatically be encrypted. So you can see that encryption is preventing, protecting our data from online uh, threats. There's something we call eavesdropping. Encryption is aimed at eliminating eavesdropping. A situation whereby we are our data is being accessed by unauthorized people along uh, the transmission uh, line uh, the other uh, the other area that we look at another technique that can be used to prevent online fraud is the one we are calling use of firewalls that is the first one now in the second one we talk about use of firewalls when we were uh, discussing intranets, I mentioned something about firewall. The firewall is basically a filter. The firewall is going to uh, filter out data uh, belonging to unauthorized people. It will block them from accessing the organization's resources. If we have uh, this uh, to be a sample diagram of the organization, that is the organization. And we have many people, uh, these are uh, users. These people are trying to access the organization's data from different uh, areas. Maybe they're in different towns or they're in different countries. So then we have the firewall. To be able to verify, the firewall will be able to verify the user logon details. It works like a proxy server. If the user logon details are as per the, the information in the organization server, then the firewall will authorize accessibility. But if the user logon details are not as per whatever is in the server, the firewall will not authorize accessibility. We are using them to protect websites or sections of websites from an authorized accessibility. And the key point is that the firewall is configured uh, to examine the user details before the users can be allowed to access our data. Now, the other uh, method or the other technique to prevent online fraud is what we are calling intrusion detection systems. Systems. That is IDS. Now the IDS is meant to protect sections of websites from unauthorized access, from uh, the people we are calling intruders. They, they, they are uh, techniques that are configured to protect the most vulnerable points of public networks. Uh, there are those points of networks, for example, in an organization, the, 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 the section of the, the network that has the payroll is so vulnerable. Everybody wants to access the payroll to know what other people are getting. If you look at the CASNEB, one of the most vulnerable pages of the CASNEB website 
could be the, the web page for students' results. So in that case, we configure the intrusion detection system to protect that section of a website. 